Okay, so Simon's asking a question. If you had to explain it in simple terms, how to outline chords while improvising to someone, what would you say? Uh, basically, what you need to do, Simon, if you're gonna explain to someone how to do that, uh, I'm assuming they know the basics of improvisation so they at least know how to play a pentatonic scale. Um, so what you're going to do is within the parameters of whatever scale you are comfortable in, I would recommend uh, from root position, minor pentatonic. So say we're in G minor. So the, the main, the main like the, the crux of it is outline the chord tones within the minor pentatonic scale. So whatever the chord is moving for, like wherever the chords are moving, you outline whatever chords there are at the certain time that needs to happen. And that's it. There's nothing more, com like there's nothing complicated about it. So in the example of Ain't No Sunshine, because I know you're trying to play that, the song goes G minor and D minor, F, so. I'm, so, I'm stuck in playing in the previous song, so hold on, give me a second. So I'm sitting here, so. So we go G minor, D minor, and then F. And so what that is, is it's a, I like to think of it like a one minor chord, five minor, and then uh, flat seven, seven, one, or whatever. Whatever you decide to think of numbers helps you out. But G minor, D minor, F. And now, so if I play a G minor chord, when, and I'm gonna stay in the G minor pentatonic, right? So, so I'm gonna sit in G minor pentatonic. So all I'm gonna do is pop out the chord tones. Whenever there's a G minor, I'm gonna rip out the chord tones in G minor. Those ones are right there. Well, they're like G, I'm playing like a G minus seven, arpeggio kind of thing. Those are all G minor. And then the next chord D minor. So that's right here. Find them on the pent pentatonic scale. They're all right there. And then the F chord. This one is gonna bring out um, like uh, a bit of the natural minor scale. So you got this note here. So you got. Uh, and then you've got back to the G minor. So I've got. And then you got. So if I'm, I'm not going to do that, by the way. So this is like the, when, when you're learning stuff, that's the learning portion of the, of the soloing. So I'm not going in and I'm not jumping in and being like, all right, every time I play the solo, I'm going to go do this. No, this is the point before you start improvising because improvising, you need to be feeling first. Feeling should always be the most important thing, not understanding chord scales and like understanding chord tones and stuff like that. All you need to do is get the feel first always. But when you're going to learn something new and you're like, all right, where are the notes whenever I play a G minor? And you're like, all right, cool. And then when I play a, a, a D minor, you know, I've got. And then when I play an F, I've got. Uh... And then from that point, for, oh, sorry. And then from then, you're like, okay, well, those were, you've got the parameters now. Now you're going to sit down and improvise. And when you improvise, your goal is not to be like, all right, G minor, J minor arpeggio, D minor arpeggio, and then F arpeggio. That's the big mistake that everyone makes. They're like, they turn it into like this robotic exercise. It's like, that's not what it is. Is you're going to vibe and you're just, going to, you're just going to shred. And then all you're going to do is once you finish shredding, you're just going to be like, where there might be a D minor, try and hit a D minor chord tone. Where there's a G minor, try and hit a G minor chord tone. Where there is an F, try to hit an F chord tone. So I've got.
So I'm not like there. I was trying to kind of fit in the chord tones where they made sense, but like I'm just vibing. I'm having fun, and you're all you're doing is that you know that like they are lit up when I can't. Like I know that say there is an F chord coming, and I'm like, oh man, if I hit this bad boy right here, which is just a triad, like a double stop triad on the root third of a uh, of an F, I'm like that's gonna slap like super super hard. Like if I'm going like. If I'm doing like boom, and then I go, and then I come, that's gonna slap really, really hard. And then I resolve it to the next triad double stop right there. So you see, I'm following, I'm just following the chords right here. So even if I was just going like, I'm just going, I'm literally just following the chords. There's no fancy shit here. Like the fanciness is all I'm doing is just taking off four notes of a chord and just putting in two. And then singing in my mind a pentatonic zone. Like that, that's it. The, if you overthink this, Simon, it's gonna be really, really hard. And everyone gives you so much information. They're always like, play your arpeggios, do this. And when I was at Berkeley, that was the shit that I was, I could not stand. Because if you practice your arpeggios, you practice your scales, did all that stuff, man, that's a lot of time. Like a lot of fucking time. And I am not like Joe Pass, I am not any of these chads that want to sit there and practice like scales all day. I just want to play music. And as soon as I started playing music, I actually got better at scales because you're giving a musical context to everything you're learning. So take the five minutes to really map out of like, okay, well, I've got a G minor, so I've got, and then I've got a D minor. All right. And then I got an F. And then just find ways to connect those chord tones to the pentatonic, and then you go and vibe. And then once you do that, Bro, you are just absolutely crushing. You will sound so much, so much more musical. But you need to be focusing more on like grooving on like. And then this is one. This is the one where you get that five minor to the four minor. So this one's kind of easy to fit in because you can just kind of like do it like a double stop thing where you sit on the D minor. This is a little hack that I do. I'm literally going. I'm just doing a just like a really cool double stop, outlining the chord. I'm like going to play the chord right. So, and I go. And then I slide down to here. Well, that's, a, that's a really, really subtle lick that you can do. And then you can do variations of that every time you go to that 5-4. That's how I like to approach the 5-4 and outline it. Uh, but yeah. Tom Hastings official. We've got someone official in here. So much Jack Black school rock vibes and the sound effects. Do, 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 do. That lick is cool. I know, right? But the, the thing with the licks is it's like I'm going to show you the lick and then you're going to do the lick and then I'm like, did you learn? Because that's the thing, right? I don't want you to copy what I do. I want you to reverse engineer how I did it. Like I want you to reverse engineer like, oh, well, if Luan plays... You know, he plays a minor chord like this and we're at my pentatonics right here. I can actually copy that. I can do that in every key. Like you can learn how to do that kind of stuff. I want you to be able to reverse engineer what I do, not, not be like copy the lick. Because copying the lick doesn't really serve you. It just makes it like, an, and like Berkeley people are not imp impressed by you copying stuff. Like the reason I got a scholarship was not because I could copy, but it was because I sounded a bit more like me. And I worked really, really hard on that. And that's what I want you to work on. So you're going to crush it. <laughs>